More than 270 million Americans have been ordered to stay home and limit their movements. And Kentucky is now putting ankle bracelets on some infected people who refuse to stay home. But the restrictions are not nationwide. The rules vary, and in some places it seems it's too late. Confirmed cases keep soaring. There are more than 211,000 in the U.S. now, a jump of 22,000 today. And more than 4,700 people are known to have died. The real number is certain to be higher because we know people in places like New York City are dying in their homes and even in hospitals. People are dying in such numbers it's hard to keep an accurate tally. Jackson Prosco reports. They are lives cut short by the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. James Goodrich, a renowned neurosurgeon who separated conjoined twins. 60-year-old Sharon Seiler, a California woman with no underlying health problems three members of the Conkey family in Ohio, the grandmother of New Yorker Robert Luger. But my grandmother died alone. <laughs> she died alone. We didn't even get to say by her. In hospitals across the U.S., they're preparing for many more grim days as doctors and nurses face tough decisions about who they're able to treat. Well, nearly everybody coming to the emergency department has this, and we're getting completely overwhelmed. It's predicted COVID-19 will kill at least 100,000 Americans in the coming months, with deaths and confirmed cases climbing rapidly by the day. That brutal reality has forced even the most reluctant to act. Florida's governor, who refused to break up the party over spring break, bowed to pressure and issued a stay-at-home order. There are already 7,000 cases in the state. Even though there's a lot of places in Florida that have very low infection rates, um, it makes sense to, to make this move now. New York took more drastic steps, closing overcrowded playgrounds after families refused to keep their distance. Who else has to die for you to understand you have a responsibility in this? Nearly 85% of Americans are under orders to only leave home for essential reasons. But for thousands of grieving families, it's simply too little, too late. The U.S. government's emergency stockpile of masks, gowns and gloves is dangerously close to being depleted. Officials say it was never meant to confront a 50-state pandemic and they're having a hard time restocking it. At the same time, the U.S. government is said to be preparing an order for 100,000 body bags. Donna? Jackson Prosco in Washington, thanks. Is wearing a face mask in public worth it? Coming up, we'll dive into the debate. We know what works to protect us from this virus, staying physically distant, staying home, and washing our hands. But what about wearing face masks in public? We know the medical grade ones, the N95 masks, are in short supply and they must be saved for frontline workers. But what about more basic ones, even homemade masks? As Mike Armstrong reports, the thinking on that is evolving. It isn't that there are a lot of masks in Austria. They're almost everywhere. In fact, as of next week, by law, they'll be mandatory in all grocery stores. This probably should have been introduced from the start, this woman says. There are already two European countries forcing people to wear masks. This is the recent swearing in of the new government in Slovakia. In the neighboring Czech Republic, there's also a movement to spread the idea globally Everyone. of masks for all. I know, they may be told you that masks wouldn't protect you, but there are studies proving that even a homemade mask can be partially protective. Partially. Any protection is essential today. Now, the conclusions in the studies range from masks being a last resort to suggesting they should be a part of a pandemic response. In fact, even homemade masks worn by everyone could help slow transmission. Several Asian countries where mask use is already common have had more success controlling COVID-19. In South Korea, they started, they had their first deaths about the same time as Italy. Their deaths are now about 100 times less and they have the magic recipe of four things, testing, tracing, quarantine, and universal mask wearing. So far, there is no appeal for the Canadian public to wear masks. Governments right now are focused on the critical shortage of N95 masks. We do need to protect uh, medical masks for medical professionals and other frontline workers. Now, there are questions about whether the public would use masks properly, but the U.S. Centers for Disease Control is already considering asking people to cover their faces in public. 
And at this Toronto hospital, there's an appeal out for homemade masks. They want to distribute them in the neighborhood to anyone who comes within six feet of others. The goal isn't only to protect the wearer, but the people around them as well. I protect you, you protect me. Mike Armstrong, Global News, Montreal. There is no approved treatment for this virus, but labs all over the world are working to develop some. Clinical trials are underway, and the American Federal Drug Administration has approved the use of two anti-malarial drugs, even though they are unproven. It's hoped the possible benefits will outweigh the risks. Heather Urich's West on the race to find a treatment. Hydroxychloroquine has been used for years to protect people from the devastating impacts of malaria. Researchers believe it could help protect against COVID-19 as well. There's some data to suggest that if you're taking hydroxychloroquine and you're exposed to the virus, that uh, the infection won't take hold. The evidence behind it comes from uh, the fact that it's able to inhibit the, the replication of this virus in a cell culture, which means in a laboratory. Uh, but we don't have any evidence that this works uh, at all in people, which is why we need to do this trial. Patients across Manitoba, Quebec and Alberta are now being enrolled in the international clinical trial, one of several studies currently underway in this country as researchers search for a treatment that works. We have no therapies for COVID-19 specifically outside of high quality hospital care. Um, and so that's the hope that we all collaborate and coordinate, that we learn as much as possible, as fast as possible. The HIV drug Lopinavir Rendesivir is another medication being studied. Several provinces, including BC and Ontario, have launched clinical trials involving patients vulnerable to the disease. We're starting some trials in care homes um, where if you are exposed, you get um, randomized to either a medication or not um, and seeing if you get infection in the end. Convalescent plasma is being looked at carefully as well. This comes from the donated blood of patients who have already recovered from COVID-19. A hospital in Texas began the first North American trial for this therapy last weekend. A Canadian trial expected to involve 1,000 patients will likely start in about a month. The science is moving very quickly because the virus is moving fast too. Researchers hope to know soon what therapies work and which ones don't. Heather Urex West, Global News, Calgary. Jeff will continue to consult with experts and try to answer your questions. Send them to your questions at globalnews.ca. And on our website, you'll find a special page dedicated entirely to COVID-19. That's at globalnews.ca slash coronavirus.